Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, wherever it is uh, you're located. A couple of my, several of my subscribers have asked me to do a video on functions because they're dealing with functions at school uh, or in, at the college level. And I decided to, this could be a brief video though, because there's a lot, I mean, I could write a whole book about functions, right? But I'm going to show you the, we're going to go over the most important definitions for functions and what uh, they entail. So you can think of a function, the, the analogy that I always tend to use is a, a function is like a machine. Uh, when you go to, for example, a vending machine and you put in a, back in the day, it, I know it's more expensive now, you'd put in a dollar. And for every dollar, right, you put in one dollar and you got a specific product back. So it's really, that is how a function works. It has an input and depending on the input you give it, you get an output. So the formal, I mean, we could go into the formal definition, but basically, if functions are typically labeled as some kind of y, so we'd have y equals f of x. And typically, this is called, your the y is called the dependent variable or the output, you could say the output, meaning that y will depend on what you put into f of x, right? This is a dependent. And this, of course, is called the independent or the input. Now, the important thing for uh, both for most purposes for school, functions have a domain and a range. So the domain, I'm gonna put this on the board. In other words, what you can put into the function to make it work. Um, if you think of, the, you, but going back to the analogy of the vending machine, if your machine can only take dollars, well, you can put in, back in the day, they used to have a different currency. Now they have the Euro uh, over in Europe. You, but if you had like the French francs and your machine only takes dollars, well, guess what? You put in a franc in there and it's not gonna work out for you. Or if you go to Europe, right, and you go to a place that uses the European, uh, the euro, and you use dollars, well, guess what? The machine is not going to recognize dollars, so you can't use that. It's the same thing with uh, domain. Now, the range is the set of all real values that the function can output, or if you prefer saying it, produce. So for example, if your vending machine only sells soft drinks, well, you can't get candy. You can only get soft drinks in that vending machine, right? So there are a couple of ways. Um, if you also wanna think about it in terms of a graph, you could do a little test and what I always tell my students is one way to quickly test for a function if you're graphing it. You can always think of your graphs if this is the y axis. And this is the x axis. If you have something like, let's say. Well, if you apply the horizontal line test. Let's put some points in here. OK, so the horizontal one, it can cut through the function more than once and it's still a function. But if you and but if you're doing it uh, vertically, it can only go through it once. So this is definitely a function because horizontally it's cutting across uh, more than one point, which is fine if it's horizontal, if it's vertical, 
then it can only go through it once. So if I apply a vertical line, well, yeah, I've gone over it once, so it's still a function. On the other hand, if I had a graph that looks like this, like a parabola, and I were to draw it like this, well, if I apply the vertical line test, ooh, it cut, it cuts through twice. That is not a function, right? So that's one way you could look at it graphically as well. The other issue is, and by the way, uh, the domain, typically, if it's x and y, of course, this is x, this is y, you think of this, the y, as your range. And you could think of x as your domain. It's very important that we get functions down pat, right? So only one possible output is acceptable for a domain, right? So if you, this is why quadratics are not, because you could get more than one output in the uh, in a quadratic function, in a quadratic equation, right? So you're not going to be able, uh, you can't really consider that a function in that sense. Um, so if you think about like input values, right? Let's say you had a little table x and y and x is going to be let's say you're at the shop right the number of uh we're going to say the number of cans you buy the number of cans of something right it could be anything uh, so y we're going to say the price you have to pay So of course, depending on how many number, like let's say you buy one can and the price, let's say, is a um, dollar. So if you buy one can, that's a dollar. That's your output. If you buy two cans, that's two dollars, right? Two dollars. If you buy three cans, that's three dollars. So you can see in every single example here, you are producing for each value you are producing a unique output. So that would definitely represent a function. On the other hand, on the other hand, let's say that instead of the price, I would give you the following relationship. Let's say that X is the height of a student, right? A student's height. And Y would be the age of a student. Well, we can't do that, right? Because it is possible to have more than one different, at different ages can have the same height. So that does not represent a function, does it? You could be five foot five and you could be 40 years old. You could be 18 years old. You could be 25 years old. So it's not going to work out as a function, is it? Okay. And that being said, there are a couple of tips I will give you that are based on fundamental rules of math in order for you to be able to find the domain of the majority of functions, at least in this video. So this is always something that you should keep in mind. I call them the domain laws. Number one, polynomial expressions always have real numbers, all real numbers, as the domain. All right, so like, for example, let's say you had the polynomial um, 3x squared. plus 2x minus 7. And they ask, what is the domain? Well, that's easy. All real numbers. Any number that you input will work. We'll give you a unique output here. So that's perfect. 
Number two, if your expression has an x in the denominator, they are undefined when the denominator is zero. So for example, if I were to give you three plus two X minus seven, over x plus 1. So you would say in this case, if they ask you for the domain, you would say, okay, all real numbers except when x, x except negative 1. Because, so x cannot be equal to negative 1. Why? Because if you do that, you'd be dividing by 0. And uh, I've said that many times in my classes, that is illegal in math. Don't you ever divide by zero, otherwise you get infinity. So I don't wanna see any of my students dividing by zero in the denominator, you always have to watch out for that. The third principle, the third law, is that roots If you're in, okay, so just a little bit of technical vocabulary here. The index is when you have any root function, like let's say you had an expression that was the square root of four, right? The number that goes outside here, it's really a two. I'm gonna put it in red. This is called the index. This is called the index. All right, so if that's true, what I'm referring to is, let's say you had a function, um, f of x is equal to radical x minus 1. See if it lets me type it in. Yep, they worked out. Okay, so in this case, my values under the radic the radicand, right? Whatever goes under that symbol, have got to be either zero So that means that it cannot be equal to you cannot have it has to be greater than or equal to 1. Right. Because if I had, for example, negative one, then you would have a negative value under the radicand, and we do not want that because then you would have an imaginary number. You all know this, right? You can't have negative square roots. I hope you all know this. If not, we'll do a video, but can't have that, right? So therefore, your domain here has to be one, right? Because that would give you a value of zero or more. All right, the next one is if you have a logarithms, for all positive real numbers. So if I gave you f of x equals the log of x plus one, right? The domain, all positive real numbers. There's also function notation, which I'm not going to get into in the video because I just want to do a brief, but there's a way of listing it. All right, next one. The trigonometric identities.
they are always defined. They are always defined. And finally, so like for example, I should give you an example, but so the, like if I gave you f of x is the sine of x, all real numbers. Domain is all real numbers. This is always true, by the way. These notes are always going to be true for you. Next one. Tan, right, the tangent function is not defined when cosine equals zero. So if I gave you, for example, f of x equals the tan of x, you would just say undefined if cosine of x equals zero. So hopefully this gives you a brief overview of when to, of what to look out for when you're dealing with functions. Now this is only, like I said, a very brief overview because the next thing we're going to be doing in another video is operating with, with more functions, finding the domains, finding the range, helping you see if you can identify something. But this is basically the, a brief overview of what they're supposed to be. So again, think of it like a machine. You can also think of it with mapping. Right? It could be input, output. Your maps right, have to match exactly. Each input only goes out to one output exactly once and once only. I hope this video was helpful, at least to give you a brief overview. And I'll be posting more videos of different topics. Thank you again. And if this was useful, as I always say, please subscribe to my channel. If, it, if any of the content is useful to you, thank you. And I greet you from the beautiful area of Lynchburg, Virginia.